UV ink cures through UV radiation. It does not dry. Okay? As I mentioned earlier, the solvent is a monomer. It's used to lower the viscosity of the ink, but it's a reactive diluent. In other words, it reacts with the oligomer and is part of it. The resin is the oligomer. It's a molecular complex consisting of a few monitor, monomers. It provides the body of the ink as well as the functional properties, and I apologize for uh, repetitiveness, but I found that repetitiveness is actually a good thing in education. We don't always get things the first time or the seventh time. Photo initiator, and I, and I already described it, becomes excited, forms free radicals, initiates the catalyzing chemical reaction, polymerization. So that uh, monomer and oligomer, they cross link and they actually form a polymer, a plastic. Okay? And now, like I said earlier, while it acts as a solvent, it actually becomes. Uh, helps determine properties like gloss and that sort of thing. <clears throat> now, nothing evaporates on the arm. Nothing. If, if there's something evaporates, I don't know why, but nothing in UV ink evaporates. Everything in that ink becomes part of the printed, printed image. So an interesting phenomenon about that is that, excuse me, and this was one of the big selling points about UV ink, and is that, let's say this is your film, and now you've deposited this much ink on it. This is solvent or water, and this is UV cured, right? Well, if you recall that pie chart, the solvent is about 50% of that ink. So what happens here, that, the same amount of ink for the same analogs, same press conditions, in theory, about the same amount of ink gets deposited. However, if it's solvent or water based ink, you're going to end up with about an ink film about that thick. <coughs> Whereas with the UV, whatever goes on there stays on there. So there are benefits to that. Pigment situations, you're looking through more ink, it gives it a, a richer depth and that sort of thing. You're not dealing with anything volatilizing. So that's one of the interesting phenomenons about UV ink versus the other two. So for a given set of press conditions, especially the analog, the final ink film is thicker than that of software. UV ink advantages, it's the most stable and easiest to control press side. And that's the irony thing. It's a high-tech thing, UV. It's the easiest ink to work with. Nothing is volatile. The ingredient ratios don't change. Uh, so you you check the viscosity just to make sure you know nothing funny is happening, but you really don't even have to check the viscosity once you've confirmed that the viscosity is good before it goes to the press. There are no press side additives. Your operator is not going to add anything to UV. And there's little or no color shift since you don't have solvents coming in or out and you're not adding all of these additives your color is staying pretty consistent. Your cells are not, uh, the, the ink is not drying in the cells of the analogs, diminishing the volume. You have a pretty consistent color. It flows well even when not using pumps. Now one of the phenomena that happen, if we look at an overview, uh, overhead view, this is your analogs roll, and it protrudes beyond this ink pen. So we're looking at it above. We have an ink pen, we have an analog, uh, uh, a, uh, a uh, rubber roller actually, sorry, in the ink pen, not the analog roll, right? That rubber roller is sitting in that pen, picking up ink and transferring it to the analog roll. It keeps doing that. Well, what happens is, as that thing's rotating, little eddies form. The ink is just swirling, swirling there. So that actually, if you're using water-based ink, this can start to get thick, creating problems. UV ink flows beautifully throughout. There's no pockets of where it's getting heavier or anything like that. So it won't form thickening eddies. 
and it does not build up on the hoses inside and stuff like that. You can have solvent based or water basing builds up on the inside of the hoses. It won't happen with UV. It's wet upon the return to the analogs. There is no re-wetting consideration. Whereas solvent ink re-wets re -wets readily, but still needs to be re-wet, and water-based ink is a little bit more challenging, UV is wet. It is not dry until it is cured by UV light. You can, um, analog plugging is really almost not a problem. It can be left in the press during downtime. I'm not going to advise that, but many people do that. They stop the press, <coughs> they separate the rollers from the analog so there's no contact, they cover it, and they go home. Next day they come, they put it up, bop, boom, and they go, and nothing has dried. That has, has a lot of benefit there. Uh, you can print on the impression cylinder. <clears throat> Sometimes we use a tint roller to flood what we call cut flood coat the substrate. So you're a narrow way of operation. Well, see, I okay. You're a narrow web operation, and it's very common to completely cover the surface of that substrate with a monotone color. It may be a fluorescent or something, but it's it's going to completely cover that. Uh, with water-based ink, you have to make sure that you that you do not print beyond the substrate because as soon as the water-based ink gets on the impression roller, it starts to build up very rapidly, and it's an intolerable situation. You just can't do that. It'll start to build up and it'll create a mess. You have to start the press and clean it up. However, UV, you can have a tin roller that's just as wide as a press. And I don't care where, what substrate you put in there, if you, let's say you're doing a UV overcoat, uh, you know, either a flood coat or just a gloss UV, you can print on the on that impression cylinder and it'll just apply a little film on there, but that film won't grow anymore. That's one of the things that we operators take advantage of. We just put a wide tint roller on there and that's it. We don't have to worry about changing it as the width of the, sub, of the, of the substrate changes. So that's a very, <laughs> very nice uh, benefit. Easy cleanup of tools, press parts, and that sort of thing. You take a wipe with isopropyl alcohol, you're done. And it can be cured in the sun for disposal. If you have something you need to dispose, you put it in the sun, you let it dry, and it hardens up, and you can dump it. At least we can. Now, and I said at least we can. You need to confirm if that's something that you can do. Another advantage is got excellent lay down, nice look, low incidence of pinholing, great gloss. Fast curing if you have adequate energy. Uh, there, as I mentioned, there's a thicker ink film left behind on the substrate. And you, because of that, you may be able to get away with using a lower volume analog roll, consuming less ink, and still uh, achieving some of those results. So a little bit, not much, but you can maybe lower your, the volume of the analog roll where, uh, compared to what you might have done with the water-based ink. <clears throat> now here's uh, some of the uh, disadvantages. It's uh, an expensive start. The UV lights, all of that stuff is very, very expensive. There are power consumption considerations, although I have a question mark there because I wonder about the other drying mechanisms and what's involved there. The ink will not cure without UV uh, light. So if uh, if your UV lamp stops working, you can do what I've done sometimes. Is we take one of those industrial hair dryers and we point it to the web and we dry it. It's an emergency. We've got to get this job out until the dryer gets fixed. So we take a hair dryer, which I don't have one by the way, but then we apply it to the uh, to the thing. We can get by, or we can run it real slow maybe, or something like that, and we can get away with it. UV, no light, no cure, no run. And uh, different pigments affect curing differently because that's film of, of UV. You're exposing light. You're exposing it to light, UV light. And it has to go through all the way to the bottom so the UV adheres to the substrate and so that it's completely polymerized or cured. Some pigments will block that UV, okay, if there are Whites can be an issue, other colors, doesn't matter the color, but different pigments can affect 
curate. That's not always obvious. It can be challenging. You could cure up to here or here, and maybe not cure that bottom. So the surface may appear cured, but actually the bottom layer might not be cured. So it introduces some challenges, even with that, and even a variability in the cure rate depending on the pigment. It's not obvious when lamps are exhausted. Over time, the UV lamps start to diminish in output. And it's not obvious. It still looks like a bright light. I don't even want to look at that. But you have to monitor it because the life, the life of the lamps are, is going away. So if, if you're not adequately curing, like I said, it's not always obvious, you might discover this in a downstream operation. You might be converting it, rewinding it. You're already on another job on this press. And they come back and say, we lost 15% of the job because it wasn't cured. It's not obvious. It could be a problem. You can ship product to your customer that way. It's not cured. The ink can be tracked through the press room and even to your home. You know, you step on a bottle or you get some on your pants or something like that. You can go home and sit down on your furniture and deposit uncured UV ink if you're not careful. Or you can transfer it to your eye. Right? Oops, I got some UV. It just happened to rub and now I have UV in the corner of my eye. And food contact applications can be a concern because of something they call migration, where uh, <clears throat> excuse me, components in the UV ink can actually migrate through to the product onto the food, and that's not good. And they don't permit that, so that can be a, one of the uh, downsides. Keys to success with UV, make sure that all the colors on the job cure, not just the black or the white, but they all cure, okay? And there are tests for confirming that. Confirm it throughout the run, every roll at least. Keep in mind that the ink does not dry. Keep that in mind, as I said. You can get it on documents, your eyes, your hands, and your home. Track it through the press room. 